Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, good morning. I'm going to let uh, Facebook come on live here. Um, all right, I think we're live. Good morning. Uh, I am Joe Jamanco, managing partner of Jamanco Law Partners, a Bolingbrook, Illinois based law firm with satellite offices in New Lenox and now in Warrenville. Uh, I'm doing a, sh a quick uh, live video this morning to address a topic uh, of storm chasers, contractors, and I'm doing it live specifically because of the storms that occurred on June 20th, uh, 2021. I'm hoping that this video can get shared with anybody who may have been affected by the storm um, and uh, hopefully it can um, help them avoid certain pitfalls that we see from clients all the time. Um, anytime there's a major storm, we tend to see that within a few months of that, six months to a year, we tend to get an influx of calls. And I can guarantee right now that what's gonna happen in December uh, or this time next year, sometime between then, is we're gonna get a lot of phone calls from people who were affected by the tornadoes that went through on uh, June 20th, uh, specifically in Naperville, Woodridge, Darien, so forth. A lot of people were affected. Not everybody lost a home necessarily, but a lot of people had some storm damage. And anytime there's a storm damage claim, what follows tends to be the same series of events every single time. Uh, a couple of years ago, when we had some uh, tremendous hail damage here in Bolingbrook, our home was hit. We uh, had to get a new roof, uh, some new shutters or some new uh, screens on our windows and some other things like that. And there were a ton of claims that followed from uh, clients that were in a similar situation that had issues with contractors. So my point today is to share a few tips to hopefully keep anybody who was affected by the tornadoes from frankly having to call us, frankly needing an attorney at all. Um, and uh, so if, uh, if you know someone who's affected by the storms, please feel free to share this video with them. Uh, first of all, let's talk about what a storm chaser is. A storm chaser is often uh, a person who's referred to as someone who chases a storm. Um, they are people who are contractors who go out looking for opportunities uh, to take on work from people who are frankly in desperate situations. Right now, if you go out to Darien, Woodridge, um, Naperville, which you're going to see if you drive around, I guarantee it is you'll see several uh, vehicles out and about that have signs on the side of them talking about that they're contractors, that they deal with storm damage, all sorts of different things. Some of these folks are legitimate. Some of them are good business people who have good, solid businesses, but some of them are not. And that's the problem, is that some of these folks can uh, really cause havoc for you. With a storm chaser, they tend to fall into two different categories. Uh, one is going to be either a contractor who does the work, who's looking for work and wants to take on the claim. The other is what's referred to as a public adjuster. Now, a public adjuster is someone who you can hire uh, as your private adjuster, so to speak, who will work with you and your insurance company to help you process a claim. Now, I will tell you flat out, if your house was hit by the tornado and you have insurance coverage, it's highly unlikely that you're going to need a public adjuster to do the bare minimum. Where public adjusters can be helpful is where your insurance company has denied a claim, has denied part of your claim. Uh, if the insurance company has denied, say, your roof, and they say that the roof damage is not a result of the storm, a public adjuster can come in for you and can argue for you and try to help you get coverage. It's not guaranteed, and there's a downside. If you review a public adjuster contract, everyone that I've ever seen has in it that the public adjuster gets a percentage of the claim. Oftentimes, what I see is 25%, 20-25%, and I think it varies a little bit. Uh, now, this is a regulated industry within the state of Illinois, but people don't generally know about it. And the problem is that people, when they have their house hit by a tornado, they tend to be in a desperate situation. They tend to be without a place to live. They tend to have tremendous damage. They tend to be suffering property damage and loss, and they're looking for somebody to help them through the situation. And when someone shows up on your doorstep and they say, I'm here to help, I'm a public adjuster, you don't have to pay me, I'm gonna get paid by the insurance company. That's music to people's ears sometimes. And so what winds up happening is you sign the contract because you think you're not gonna have any personal obligation to this. If, they don't, if they're not successful, you're not gonna to have to pay them. The reality is, once you sign that contract, you are giving them part of your claim, whether or not you use them, and you can't undo it, so to speak. Um, it, once you've signed on with them, you're going to be stuck giving them part of your insurance claim. Now, oftentimes in these public adjuster contracts, there will be provision that says if you use company A, which tends to be a sister company, uh, if you use company A, then we will waive our fee, which is great. Assuming company A is the company that you want to use. If it's not, then you're going to be giving away that percentage to the public adjuster. And if you use a different company, you're going to have less money to cover that. I'm telling you right now, start with your insurance company. 
reputable insurance companies will process your claim, especially with the tornado that just occurred, they will process your claim and they will tell you how much your roof is, how much uh, your uh, siding is. They'll, they'll process these things. You may not need a public adjuster, okay? So take your time. Uh, and again, my recommendation is don't hire a public adjuster unless the insurance company denies your claim. In that situation, that's, that's okay to do. Uh, there actually is a process under your insurance policy to appeal any decision the insurance company has made. There is what's called appraisal. It's in every insurance policy that I've ever seen. So you can actually contest it if you don't like the results or what's been covered. Um, so public adjusters, you got to be aware of them. You probably don't need them in this situation. Um, start with your insurance company. Talk to your agent. Talk to your claim rep. Get a claim started. That's where you should really start. Work directly with the insurance company. Uh, and yes, insurance companies, they don't make money by paying out claims. They make money by denying claims and taking premiums. But reputable insurance companies will process your claim. You'll wind up having to pay out your deductible, uh, but that should really be it. Now, once you have started a claim, it's been approved, you're going through the process of having the construction done, before you can actually start, you got to hire the contractor, right? Well, before you hire a contractor, please, please check around, make sure that the contract that you're hiring is reputable. Uh, I strongly encourage with the internet being what it is, the ability to check reviews, that you get on and you check to see what other prior customers have said about the person, about the company. And don't look for reviews that are all bunched together in say the last six months. They should be reviews that span a period of time. Contractors who have just started today, they may be good contractors. They may be good people who have just started a business. But the problem is, is that you have no history, no way of knowing that this is a company that's been in business for a while. A lot of people that call us with problems tend to be people who have hired contractors who have no money to actually do the work, they have no money to pay their people, and they're, they're basically running their business check to check. And that's a problem, because if the work is not good quality and you don't wanna pay them for all the work until they correct something, they may stop working. We see problems crop up all the time where contractors haven't finished a job or that the work they've done is not of good quality, and they wanna place the mechanics lien against the property. A mechanics lien is uh, what's referred to oftentimes as a super lien. It takes priority, priority even over your mortgage. And a contractor who's worked on your property can put a lien against it. And if that occurs, you're going to have to deal with that lien before there's any uh, refinance of your mortgage, before you sell the house. There's all sorts of different things. We see that with contractors who are not reputable um, and contractors who have not done a good job. So before you hire your contractor, check them out. And you know, some people used to rely on the BBB quite a bit, and it's still there. But to be honest with you, there are so many other review sites that you can check out. Uh, you know, you can start with the, with the good old Google review. Look for a company that has lots of Google reviews. Check out the negative reviews and see what they say. Every so often, every business, including mine, get reviews from people that are completely unreasonable and have nothing to do with the actual job that was done. Uh, so there are those outlier reviews, but if you look at all of them, you look at the ratings, if you look at the history, you're likely to get a better contractor, have a better experience and fewer problems. Um, make sure that they're licensed. Don't hire a contractor that's not licensed. Um, if the person or the company that you're hiring doesn't have a license with your city or village, uh, that means they're probably not familiar with the codes and that could be a problem as well. Now, the contract. This seems really simple. People don't do it all the time. Read the contract. Read the whole contract. Make sure you understand the contract. If you don't understand the contract, don't sign it. Talk to an attorney, talk to somebody else who can help you understand what's in the contract. Make sure you know what your obligations are in terms of payment, timing, uh, what they're going to do, what they're not going to do. Uh, you need to also know when they're actually gonna start work. And I would suggest you get in the contract, anything that they're telling you that you're relying on, get it in the contract. If it's not in the written contract, don't plan on them doing it. If they're telling you that they're going to have it finished in six weeks, have them put some kind of note in the contract indicating that they're going to start on a certain day, they're aiming to finish by another day. If it's not in the contract, don't plan on them doing it. You're not gonna be able to hold them to it. Um, if you decide at some point that you need to fire a contractor, you tend to have the rights to do that, but know the repercussions. Make sure you know if you fire a contractor what you're going to have to do. Uh, whether it's you're going to lose part of the uh, of the money, you're going to have to pay them something, uh, or if there's something else they've stuck in the agreement. 
there are going to be repercussions if you have to fire a contractor. Now, if you've hired a contractor, they're not doing the job, uh, hopefully you haven't paid them anything. Uh, and in that situation, you may want to seek the advice of an attorney to talk about how to properly terminate the contract to protect your rights the best way possible. Never pay cash, especially if it's a large amount. Um, I also recommend you don't give a large deposit ever. We had a client who about two years ago had a fire in his home. Uh, the initial payment he got from the insurance company to get started was about $98,000. He signed that check over to the construction company. The construction company went belly up about four months later before they did any work at all. Do not give a large deposit unless you know exactly why and you're positive that that money is not gonna disappear on you. Make sure that if you do have problems with the quality of the work, uh, things are left undone, things are broken or what have you, take photos, take video, make sure you have a good record of what's occurred. Because once you start changing those things or once time has passed, you've hired a new contractor, if you don't have a good record of what occurred, you're gonna have a tough time litigating that down the road or proving what actually occurred. Uh, there are lots of challenges that can come up with contractors, with public adjusters because of storms and so forth, and with insurance companies. That's a, there's a whole other topic we could go into with problems with insurance companies and handling claims. Uh, but given the timing of everything, uh, please be aware of storm chasers and uh, construction companies that are going door to door right now, promising the world to help you with the problems that you're experiencing with your home because of the storm damage. Before you jump into a contract, make sure you understand what's going on. If you don't, call an attorney. Uh, if we can help you, feel free to give us a call. We provide free phone consultations every single day. You don't need an appointment for it. Just pick the phone and give us a call. Uh, you can call our office at 630-635-5555. Uh, or at 815-435-5555. I hope everybody's uh, safe out there. Um, everybody can get their claims taken care of, their homes. And uh, if you need anything, if we can be of any assistance, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Thanks for joining us and uh, have a great week.